Hello students once again. Welcome back to uh, the second video in the semester. This is for learning unit number one and it covers episodes one and two of the Justice with Michael Sandel videos. Until we are through the videos for uh, Michael Sandel, uh, the delivery is going to be a little bit different than you're probably used to because there's no textbook reading to do. Uh, this has been my way of saving you some money by not having to buy the textbook and the videos are really really informative and I like them a lot. So my goal here has been trying to uh, to try and adapt my lectures so that they follow the Michael Sandel videos. I want you to watch the Michael Sandel videos first before you watch my lecture because that way I'll be able to summarize and you'll see here in the video today how I plan on doing that. So, for the next couple of weeks, I want you to watch the Michael Sandel episodes between Monday and Wednesday, and I will try and have my video delivered by Thursday, so that you can do the Sunday summary, of course, by Sunday night. Um, so let's go through how this all works in this video. First off, before we cover off the Michael Sandel episodes 1 and 2, I want to cover off some of the formatting issues that are different for this Blackboard class compared to what you might have used before. So as you enter Blackboard this year, you probably saw and have already found the Start Here um, link here on the left sidebar. Uh, just below that, a couple of spaces, is the Learning Units um, folder. When you get into the Learning Units folder, you'll click on Unit Number 1, and this is the page that you'll find under Unit Number 1. So when this folder is open, you see at the very top the checklist. So this is the unit checklist, things that you're going to have to do. Right below that, you will see the Learning Objectives for this week for unit number one. The learning objectives are that you will watch episode number one of the Michael Sandel video and episode number two of the Michael Sandel Justice with Michael Sandel video lecture series. After you've done that then you will watch my video which will be in this unit here. Right now it says forthcoming because I haven't uploaded it yet so it's not there yet. Um, and then once you are done watching my video then you can go through the checklist, make sure that you've done everything before you move on to unit number two, the following unit. So I hope that makes sense. That should allow you to work fairly quickly through the semester and once again I've mentioned in the syllabus that you will be able to work ahead once I get all of these videos uploaded. I will um, be a couple of weeks ahead of you and um, so those of you who are real keeners can uh, move along at your own pace. But as a minimum you cannot go slower than what I'm going to go because that means you're not going to get the final exam done in time. So, just returning really quick for a review of where the grades are for this semester. In the syllabus, you'll see the assessments for this course include section. First off, I like introductions from each of you students so that I understand a little bit more about you. Um, you will be awarded participation points for providing me with your introductions as well as a picture. Uh, I will clarify once again that what I want your picture for is so that when you provide me with feedback, I can upload them to a video and I can compile them and edit them into a video and that way you'll get to know each other's points of view so that you're not always listening to just my point of view. I want you to get to know each other as though you were kind of sort of in a classroom environment. I really despise discussion groups on Blackboard. Um, I know most students do so I, uh, I'm not anticipating to hear a lot of complaints from uh, you students about not having to participate in a discussion group. Uh, I believe, like in a classroom environment, I'm in a position to facilitate a more objective discussion. Um, so I want your discussion to come to me and I will share that in a suitable format so that you will all still be able to hear each other's feedback. And so every once in a while there will be a discussion video that is very unique to this class alone and where you will be able to share with me some of your ideas. I've already got some really good feedback on the Ferguson, Missouri shooting of Michael Brown um, and I'm going to compile that. Uh, once you start contributing your Sunday summaries to me in multimedia format we will have audio clips and YouTube video clips and PowerPoint presentation clips that I can incorporate. A couple other things I want to cover off in the syllabus. Uh, number one, how to upload your introduction and how we will continue to um, earn participation points throughout the semester. Your introduction and your selfie picture will form part of your participation points. The participation points are worth 10 points for the semester and so for the most part the participation points will go up in half point increments so there will be 20 triggers throughout the semester that will 
incorporate your 10% of your final grade at a half a percent for each one of these participation points trigger triggers. So here in Blackboard you'll see the participation points triggers on the left hand sidebar. Uh, you click on that folder um, and it will open up right now the only participation point trigger that's in there. Typically there will only be one, maybe two participation points triggers because these disappear with regularity. If you miss the window you've missed the participation points, plain and simple. Um, so right now this window here will be open until 11.59 Sunday night. Um, and you will earn the participation points by answering these five questions. When you click on that link, this page here will open. So these questions will remain here in front of you. And you click on Write Submission, which will be your own submission, and answer these five questions. What city do you live in? What ethnicity or race do you identify with? That's an optional question. Something about your family situation, living on campus or at home, or are you a parent, married, or are you single? Um, what is your major? And uh, when do you expect to graduate? That's important for me because if this is your last semester, then I need to um, take special precautions to make sure that you graduate, um, or at least make, make sure that I'm not responsible for you not graduating. Because FAU likes to see our students graduate. We want to really dramatically improve our graduation rate. So we've got a vested interest in making sure that you graduate. If this is your final semester, there's a couple of extra things we do if you're getting close, but possibly not gonna make it. So I watch for those things. Um, once again, participation points will not be awarded if you upload your introduction after 11.59 on Sunday. So that's it for uh, participation points. Other triggers throughout the semester will be um, uh, announced by email, um, typically within a 48 hour window. So if you're not checking your email every 48 hours, you could be missing out on participation points and that would be tragic because they're really easy. All you have to do is just, as I say, participate and you earn the points. Um, it's my way of checking to make sure that you are in tune with me because I really, really, really hate losing my students when they're taking an online class. I'm not your typical online instructor and you will soon find that out. Now, so let's, we can talk about what the Sunday summaries are. Once again, down the left-hand sidebar, you will see the link for um, Sunday summaries uploads. Um, right now, the ones that are up there are for the summary number one, and summary number two is there, but uh, it's not live yet because we're only going to look at summary number one right now. The Sunday summaries are worth two points each for a total of 20 points for the semester. So at this point, we are ready to talk about episodes one and two of the Justice with Michael Sandel video lectures. So let's get started. Um, what I want you to do in order to do the Sunday summary properly is I need you to take notes during these videos. It'll be easier once you're reading the textbook because the section headers in the textbook are all given to you. All you have to do is leaf through the pages of the chapter and copy down all of the section headers and you will have this already compiled for you, but you're going to have to read it and maybe take a few notes. Because for the Sunday summary, I want to know what all of the section headers are that you paid attention to and I want you to circle the one that you're going to actually comment on um, when you do your Sunday summary. As I was watching the video, I came up with these headers here in Episode 1, Part 1. Michael Sandel taught 24 lectures in that series, and they compiled two of them to each episode. So each episode has Part 1 and Part 2. So the way I watch these videos may be the way that you would want to watch them as well. So let me just tell you what I did when I went through them so that I had a rough outline prepared of what Michael Sandel talked about. Um, I broke it into the episode one, part one, which is the moral side of murder. And as I was watching the video, I wrote down these really short sentences as just mental triggers for myself. And the minute mark, minutes and seconds, of the uh, where, where it was found so that if I do want to go back on it and refresh my memory I can go back to the video really quickly find it and for example it, it really stuck in my head what he told me about a warning to students who start studying philosophy um, when you start studying philosophy it all of a sudden challenges your worldview and he made a warning about that well I want to go back and I want to find out exactly what he said so what I do is I find out here, warning, risks involved, personal and political, at the 17 minute and 20 second mark. So now I can go back and find that. The other thing which Michael Sandel provides you is he provides these screens where he makes a special point of 
providing you with bullet points. And these are important points in his mind. They were important enough to him to actually make these slides available to his students. And so they should be important to you. Um, he talked about consequentialist moral reasoning and categorical moral reasoning. And you should be able to understand the difference between them because it was important enough to him to give you this slide. If it was important enough to him to give you this slide, it should be important enough to you that you would have made a note to yourself at what minute and second mark this slide went up so that you could go back and look at it. Um, so if you make proper notes, you will have those points on your, in your notes like I do here. Episode 1, Part 2, he made the case for cannibalism. And that's when he started talking about Bentham's utilitarianism, how to maximize utility. And, and he made a really strong idea about how they came up with and whether they were justified in deciding to eat the cabin boy. Um, the cabin boy was an orphan. He didn't have any family at home. Nobody would miss him as much as the other people would be missed. And there were some really good arguments made about, well, what stops us now from... If, we're, if we've got hungry people on the streets and there's unimportant people around, why aren't we feeding the hungry people these unimportant people? So it's a really interesting argument that can be made. And once again, this is the risk of studying philosophy is all of a sudden, well, why? all of a sudden now you get to challenge and you feel that you have permission to challenge traditional ways of thinking. Because maybe we've been doing it wrong all this long. Maybe we've held on to ethical perspectives that can be challenged and should be challenged. Um, so the three questions raised were at the 51 minute mark, and that's where he left this episode. And here's the slide. Once again, that was important for Dr. Sandel to prepare a slide for you, so it should have been important enough that you also made a note when this slide went up. Okay, episode two, part one, putting a price tag on life. Bentham's maximized utility philosophy. So here he gets really into a deep dive into Bentham. And he talks about the Czech Republic versus Philip Morris. Um, and Philip Morris actually made a pitch to the Czech Republic and said, hey, you, you as a government, you as a country, are making money by selling our cigarettes. It's, it's a net gain for you. Um, and the Ford Pinto legal case, very important things here. Um, talks about what it would be and the utilitarian perspective of banning the use of cell phones. And this was actually a Harvard study that showed that the benefits of allowing cell phones, continuing allowing cell phones to be used legally in cars, outweighs the actual cost if you actually subscribe to the idea that a human life has a cost. And that's a utilitarian way of thinking. So the Philip Morris study, once again, there's the slide that you should have made a note about when that went up at the minute mark. Um, repairing the Ford Pinto, here was the cost-benefit analysis and a utilitarian perspective that Ford had used when they thought of putting the protection in for the gas tank so that it wouldn't explode and they decided not to because it cost $11 per part. And on a strict value of putting $11 into every car that was out there doing a recall and having that actual $11 part installed was not cost beneficial to Ford Motors, which the jury didn't really go for as you heard in his lecture. And the other interesting research that somebody did was to figure out where people put a value on certain decisions being made in their life. Cut off a thumb, pull out a tooth, eat a worm, uh, or living in Kansas for the rest of your life. Now granted, Kansas may not be bad now, but during the Depression, Kansas was a pretty bad place to live. Um, so that was when they did this study. Episode 2, Part 2, How to Measure Pleasure. This is where it gets really, really fascinating. And if you don't watch these episodes in order, then you really miss what Michael Sandel is doing as he builds and builds and builds on a foundation. So it's it's not like, okay, here's a whole bunch of stuff we're studying. What he's doing is he's saying, here's a foundation, we're going to build a brick on top of it, and we're going to have a brick on top of it, and a brick on top of it. So he's building these bricks as he's building this course over these 24 parts and 12 episodes. Um, so. Now, in episode two, part two, he had a lot of slides which he put up there, and so I hope you marked each one of them down. Um, the objections to utilitarianism is that it fails to respect individual rights. There's a very strong argument about that being a really critical failure. And it's not possible to aggregate all values and preferences, um, number one, because you can't use a single value like money. And also, there isn't a distinction between higher and lower pleasures. And that's a very strong argument that I want you to make sure you understand because that's going to be 
foundational once again for the other videos that are upcoming. Um, he introduces John Stuart Mill and um, very strong arguments that John Stuart Mill adds on top of Bentham's theory of utilitarianism. I'm going to change the wording here so that it makes a little more sense. The sole evidence we can produce that shows that anything is desirable is that people actually do desire it. Now that's an important thing to understand when you're really thinking about utilitarianism. That's where John Stuart Mill started his argument. And then he built on that. He said, of two pleasures, if there be one to which all or almost all who have experience of both give a decided preference, irrespective of any feeling of moral obligation to prefer it, then that is the more desirable pleasure. So what he's saying is, if you give people an opportunity to choose, and most people are choosing one over the other, then what you have found is you have found a way of measuring that thing that is more desirable than others. And therefore, we can start understanding, if we have this knowledge, what it is that is desirable and what it is that is not. Um, so as, as utilitarian argues, this is pleasure versus pain in, in a broad sense of the term. So how do you measure pleasure? Well, if, if, if people have a choice of two things and the majority of them are choosing one over the other, then that is the only measure that we need in order to determine what is more desirable. John Stuart Mill argues that education is important to utilitarianism because if you have an uneducated population who are ignorant and making uninformed choices, then it's going to skew the results of utilitarianism. We have an obligation in society to educate people to tell them, hey, you have two choices here. You don't just have to be this way. You can actually be another way, and I think if you really looked at this other way, I think you would prefer it. So why don't you look at this other way of doing things? And so that obligation to educate society is really important because he doesn't want you to be fools. He wants you to be Socrates, and this is what he says about that. It is better to be a human being satisfied than a pig satisfied. If we educate you a little bit, then you're going to act like a human being instead of acting like a pig. If we don't educate you, probably you're going to act like a pig. And this is what John Stuart Mill is arguing here. It's better to be Socrates dissatisfied than a fool satisfied. And if the fool or the pig are of a different opinion, it is because they only know their side of the question. And so that's how he argues that we have an obligation to educate people as to what is for the greater good. And which means they have to have a choice. So we have to give them a choice and tell them why one should be a better choice than the other. And if they still choose the one, well, they're going to be in a minority. And that's where we maximize utility. And that's how we maximize utility. One last quote from John Stuart Mill is that, is, is how he defines justice. Justice is a name for certain moral requirements, which regarded collectively, stand higher in the scale of social utility and are therefore of more paramount obligation than any others. And this is why he argues that we need to educate society because once society understands one choice from another, one will come through as more just because it will serve to maximize the utility of all of society. If you uh, didn't watch the video yet, pay attention to the end of episode two. It's really kind of cute. Um, they had to put a plastic head on John on uh, Bentham because Bentham wanted to actually be part and parcel of eternity. Um, and so he left in his will that he wanted to be embalmed properly, but the embalming didn't take really well on his head, so they put the head here, which is kind of down here between his legs, which I thought was kind of cute, and they put a plastic head on him so that he looked like he actually did back in the day. Um, uh, so that's how, um, that's why we watch the videos, because Michael Sandel does make the videos interesting, and it's, uh, in my opinion, a little bit better than reading a dry textbook, especially the way he involves his students. And I really wish we had a classroom environment so that I could lecture in a way that I could involve you, but I'm going to try and duplicate that uh, the best I can by uh, incorporating your ideas into weekly videos that uh, allow you to share your opinions with other people. So I want you to really participate in the Sunday Summary. So this is how the Sunday Summary upload page looks. Um, once again, you can write a submission, but for the Sunday Sunday up uploads, um, probably you're going to be attaching a file, maybe two files. Um, so th this is the page, two points each week for 10 weeks, and um, so that'll make 20% of your final grade. And um, 
if you look back to the syllabus, these are the very, very detailed instructions in the syllabus that tell you what I'm looking for on the Sunday summary. Uh, number one, you can do a two-page executive summary of the entire episodes, episodes one and episode two, the four parts, um, and then send that to me. That needs to be two pages long, double-spaced, and you just summarize the whole thing, and that's all you have to do. Um, but that's going to be kind of boring because I'm not going to be able to share that with the rest of the class. So I would rather have something from you um, that gives me a little bit of a sense of where your passions lie, and I want to have you... I want to have that opportunity to share your passion with the rest of the class in a video every once in a while as well. So what I would rather you do, and I've made it easier for you to do it actually, so you'll spend less time doing it and probably have more fun doing it, is I either want a PowerPoint from you, um, and I'll show you how to do the PowerPoint slides by what I'm doing right here, or I want something really, really quick from you that you can record on your cell phone camera as a video and upload it to YouTube, or you can just record an audio file. And that way in this multimedia format I'll be able to put something in a video later that has your actual voice and it has your opinion and people can feel the emotion and your passion and that comes through with multimedia in a way that doesn't when you just write a two-page summary. So I would much rather see you do something here. So first off we're going to um, talk about how to do a PowerPoint if you're going to do a PowerPoint option. Now Office 365 is available to every FAU student so if you do not have the version of PowerPoint that allows you to record and embed an audio file into the um, PowerPoint then just go out and get Office 365 for free and that will also allow you to uh, um, get their cloud memory available as well which I think is really fantastic. Um, so it's probably a really good deal and I recommend you do it and that way you can do a proper PowerPoint but I would almost prefer that you do the YouTube or the audio file. Um, but if you're really shy and you want to have the structure of a PowerPoint, this is what I would do. First off, as you noticed here through my slides, I had four slides where I took notes. And this is what it looks like. I just cut and pasted all of those notes off of the uh, four slides and I put them here in one document. So this is what I would like you to do as you are watching the video. You should end up with something very similar to this. Um, don't forget to put your name in the top right hand corner of anything that you send in because that way I can actually assign the grades to you. Uh, when I have 32 assignments all coming in at midnight and I just take the files and I dump them in there and then I open them and if one doesn't have a name um, it creates a lot of extra work. So always put your name in the top right hand corner of anything that you upload. Um, but this is what I came up with and what I did was um, I chose the topic here that you see highlighted in blue. Um, I did a circle around that and that's all I want you to do. Is, um, is just put a highlight on it or highlight it in yellow or something like that that, say, that tells me out of all of the section headings in the textbook or out of all of the notes that you took while you were watching the video, this is the point or these are the three points that you're going to focus on. In my case, three points. The Czech Republic with Philip Morris, the Ford Pinto legal case, and did Ford's defense discredit the utilitarian argument? And then give me a one-sentence explanation. If you're doing a PowerPoint slide, this is fine just to do it like this. Um, just give me a one sentence explanation about what it is that motivated you to choose this topic. In my case, I chose this topic because I strongly disagree with how deregulation has consistently favored corporate lobbyists over the common worker in the middle class family. Ford made a decision to save $11 per car and people died. And it was this cold hearted corporate profit decision that had absolutely well, they did have weight to it. They, they calculated that a human life was worth $200,000. And it was going to be cheaper to pay a few people $200,000 each than it would have been to put the little ball apart in the car. Um, that's kind of cold, so I kind of have a problem with that. Um, you'll notice when I gave the instructions about how to do a PowerPoint, if you are going to do a PowerPoint slide, you are not allowed to use any more than 10 of your own typewritten words on any slide, except for this sentence. I want you to type out your sentence so that I can see it in print. And um, so these are the, this is the only slide if you do a PowerPoint that is allowed to have more than 10 words of your own typing on it. Um, next is I want you to capture the banner story from the web page of a similar credible journalistic source that illustrates a modern connection to what this point inspired in you. What made you pick this point that is connected to a current news story? In my case here, um, last October, somebody did a cost of the war in Iraq and Afghanistan, and they equated that and they connected that to what they could have spent on 
domestically in the United States if they would have chosen not to go to war in Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, and if they would have spent it on solar power. So in my way, this is kind of connected to the idea that while Philip Morris told the Czech Republic that it's going to be worth $147 million to allow cigarettes to continue to be sold in their country because of certain benefits that they gain from having additional transactions within their economy versus the healthcare costs that they would have to subsidize in people's lives. Um, so the United States made a policy decision to go to war in Iraq and Afghanistan and they spent lots and lots and lots of money that could have been spent elsewhere, spent elsewhere on schools and in this case on solar power. That's why I connected this story to the video lectures from Michael Sandel, episode one and episode two. Uh, make sure it is a credible source. Okay, you, I, I don't want you picking something off of Breitbart.com or something like that. Um, if it's a credible, researched, journalistic site that is balanced and not biased, that's what I'm after. Some people would argue that Huffington Post is biased. Some people would argue that Breitbart is not biased. But um, pick a story that kind of feels like it's the middle of the road so that you're not going after something sensationalist that will offend somebody who does not share your political or religious view. And if you do, be prepared to get the feedback from it because I'll probably feature it in the video and I will give out your email address to everybody so that they can all beat you up. Um, so anyways, make sure that you try and pick something that has some credibility to it so that you're not going after some tabloid fare. So what I did was for my PowerPoint presentation, because these are only going to be two minutes long, so you're only allowed to do a video that's two minutes because I have 32 students and if I put everybody's two-minute segment up, you're all going to be watching an hour-long video every week. Now, I'm not going to put all 32 of you up, but I don't want people to have to endure some long spiel about your opinion. Um, I just want you to capsulate your thoughts in two minutes. So here's my two minutes. I just captured this, these three paragraphs out of the story, and I highlighted them. So this is ten words, but other people wrote these words. This is a screen grab. This is not my own typing. So there's more than ten words on here, but I'm only expecting you, as my audience, to read these four circles. 2.33 trillion dollars was spent on the war in Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, a three kilowatt solar system for a single home is what they're talking about. So this is the calculation that they made, which means it would cost about $17,032 per home to put solar power on every home in the United States. And that would come out to 2.22 trillion dollars, which is less than the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. So we could have had a $17,000 solar power system on every home in America for the same price of these two wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, enormous savings. But somebody made a policy. But somebody made a policy decision somewhere that said the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq were going to be more important to somebody. Um, arguably, perhaps not every homeowner in the United States feels that those were high priorities, because I would love to have no electric bill every month. I pay $176 every month for my electric bill. Um, if I had a solar system on top of the house, I would be saving $176 every month for the rest of my life. Um, and the United States would be no longer drilling for oil to generate my electricity. And they wouldn't be burning coal and polluting our skies and burning the ozone layer down. So you, you can tell obviously where my passions are. This is why I picked this story because it's a very important story to me and I personally don't feel any safer today after spending 2.33 million dollars on wars in Iraq and Afghanistan because let's face it they just killed 12 journalists yesterday in Paris. So um, I think we just made a whole bunch of people mad at us and we're broke. We, we spent 2.33 trillion dollars and these terrorists are still going around the world doing what they do. Um, so I would rather have a solar system on top of my house than the memory of this, um, these wars in Iraq and Afghanistan that really didn't stop any terrorism. Um, so that's my opinion and that's what I want from you. I want you to share a very strong opinion about yourself. Answer these questions in your two-minute spiel. Who was hurt by this decision? Who benefited unfairly? Well, we could argue that Dick Cheney benefited because Halliburton made lots and lots and lots of money doing contracting work, building faulty showers in Iraq. Um, and a whole bunch of other defense contractors gained. But are they the average middle class Americans? Or are they wealthy rich people who had the money to spend on lobbyists 
who said that we should go to war because it's good for my wallet and it really helps my corporation if there is a war because I sell products that are needed when we fight a war and if there is no war then my products aren't selling quite as good so who benefited unfairly answer question number two uh, what made this decision unfair unjust or unethical you can argue any one of the three for this class and how could or how did or how might government intervene to stop this injustice or unethical behavior that is administrative process and that's what we're after in this class here is we're after an understanding of an administrative process that could have intervened or might intervene or should intervene and you can argue any of those positions but these are the four questions that I want you to ask and answer in two minutes um, if you want to do the YouTube video or the audio file uh, what you need to do first is you need to upload to Blackboard a Word document cover page with your name the chapter section that you chose out of the list of all of the chapter sections and a hyperlink to the story so that I can, the professor me, can pull it up and do a screen capture like I just did and I can make your video with this, with your multimedia attachment so we can hyperlink or I can capture sections of your YouTube video or I can use your audio file that you sent to my cell phone. Um, the cover page that I'm after from you, you should already have all of these bullet points if you took any kinds of notes. Um, I didn't have to stop the video once, I didn't have to lose any thought processes as I was taking these notes. They were really, really quick and easy to type and all I did was mark the minutes and seconds so that I could go back and find them again and it all fit on one page. Um, and so this is my name in the top right hand corner. I'm going to send this out to you so that you'll know that this is your Sunday summary number one and every week Sunday summary number two, number three, number four. Um, part one is your bullet points. Part two tells me why did you choose the topic that you circled above? So don't forget to circle the bullet points, the subsection, the section headings that you're going to talk to me about. Um, part three is which credible journalistic story did you choose that goes along with the topic above? So I need the hyperlink. Here's the hyperlink for my story so that I could, as your professor, go out and find that story, quickly read it myself, and use that as I compare, as I compile your um, two minute section for the rest of the class to see. And part number four. Which of the following will be your multimedia component to this assignment? You can tell me my hyperlink to the YouTube video is either here or my audio file was texted to your cell phone or emailed to you on blank date at blank time so that I can go through my cell phone and find it or I can go through my email and find it. And once again, same thing. When you do your two minute spiel, answer these four questions. And that's the uh, everything you need to do. So in reality, it should take you less than five minutes after you've taken good notes. And if you have all of these bullet points or section headings from the chapter, it should take you less than five minutes to find a story that just comes to your head. Anything that comes to your head is fine, which means you have to read the news every week so that you have stories in your head. And, um, and then give me the hyperlink. Prepare this little cover sheet here. Add, add this to the bottom of your notes. Give me the hyperlink and uh, turn on your cell phone, record two minutes of audio, or turn on your cell phone or have your girlfriend or boyfriend or family member shoot a video of you talking for two minutes and uh, put that up on YouTube and send me the hyperlink or send me the audio file. And that's it. You're done. Um, so go back into the um, Sunday summary uploads. Um, attach it. Find the file. Attach it to the file. Upload it by 11.59 every Sunday night. And um, it's worth two points every week for a total of 20% of your final grade after you've done 10 of these. If, if you have any questions on how to do this, if these instructions are not clear, you can either rewatch the video or send me an email about any specific point that uh, uh, is still fuzzy in your head. And I look forward to seeing your uh, material Monday morning. Thanks.